Welcome back folks, this is Swap, and today we're going to be doing another gameplay video featuring our Zoro mid-range deck. This time we're going to be going up against Purple Kaido and we will be putting a deckless picture here on the front for a few seconds and there's also going to be a link down in the description below that you can check out the decklist itself. On our first turn we're going to go ahead and play Nami for one. Look at the top five, we have a few cards to choose from, we have Jet Pistol, uh, 5 cost Luffy, 2 cost Luffy. I don't think we're going to be starving for our character cards, mostly because we have Saboody in our hand as well. So I think Jet Pistol is probably the, the way to go uh, with choosing this card, just because we might be seeing some bigger threats later down the line with this being Purple Kaido. We're going to go ahead and end our turn. So our opponent now has 2 Dawn. Let's see what he does with the 2 Dawn. He is going to be playing Anne, which is actually one of the new film uh, blockers. So 2 cost for 3,000 blocker. So the start of our turn, we have three Dawn. Uh, not too much we can do here. We're just going to go ahead and swing to the leader, uh, see what he does. Just 5,000, 5,000, nothing too fancy. He does go ahead and block it, so he doesn't want to draw cards just yet. Just wants to defend. Uh, he's probably just realizing this is probably maybe more of an aggressive style deck. So he wants to try to conserve his life as much as possible. And then we're going to play Usopp and the Sabaody. So the Sabaody is going to let us look at the top five. And of course, we're going to pick the Zoro. We have two Zoros, a Robin and a Luffy. Zoro is going to be one of the characters that's going to be applying a lot of pressure here. So we're just going to go ahead and pick up Zoro and end our turn. And then he's going to start off his turn with four Dawn. So let's see what he does with this four Dawn. He might just swing in first. Uh, it's usually the, the usual player, but he does. So yeah, he swings in. Let's go ahead and draw. Now we have two choppers in our hand. He's going to go ahead and play Onigashima for threes. Now he's going to start ramping up. And so this is where things are going to start getting dangerous. And we want to try to apply, uh, try to apply as much pressure as possible. And especially when he starts ramping up like this. So let's go ahead. We're going to start off with five Dawn in our uh, starting pool. And then we're going to put one on Zoro, one on Usopp. So Usopp's now a 5,000 uh, due to Zoro's ability. So he's going to go ahead and threaten the leader for 5,000. He does go and take out a Shiki out of his hand. So that's good to see. We don't have to deal with Shiki later. And then we're going to go ahead and play Zoro. Uh, the Rush Zoro. He's going to rush in for 6,000. He goes and takes a life. And we're going to use our Leader Zoro for 6,000. I think he's either... No, he's going to go ahead and take a life. And now, uh, So now he's down to 3 life. A bunch of cards in his hand now. Let's see what he does. He does start off his turn by swinging into Usopp. So he doesn't like seeing that Usopp. Uh, I'm surprised he's swung into Usopp more into Zoro. But maybe because Usopp's a much weaker character. And he probably doesn't want that free card draw that we're going to gain out of Usopp as well. Uh, he's going to go ahead and play Tesoro for 5. So Tesoro is the perfect candidate for this jet pistol because the Soro is at 6,000 power very powerful card if we leave him alive he's just going to keep drawing two cards with every swing we don't want that to happen so I'm pretty sure the first thing we're going to do here is we're just going to go ahead and spend four dawn and just get rid of that Tesoro that's not one card that we want to deal with so let's go ahead and get rid of him now we have three dawn left in the pool and I think if I'm not mistaken I think we just start um Start applying more pressure again. Our Zoro still up. Uh, we're going to go ahead and swing 6,000 for Zoro into the leader. Yeah, there's his plus two counter. Swing him for 6,000 again. Let's see if he ducks. No, he's going to block at this one. He's not going to do another counter. And then we know that he doesn't like seeing that Usopp. So we're going to go ahead and play that Usopp once again and see how he uh, reacts to it on the next turn uh, when I do have a Dawn on him on my following turn. So he is thinking about whether or not he wants to maybe swing very highly into this Zoro. He's putting two right now, which puts him up to 7,000. So another reason that we didn't uh, play those two choppers and instead we played the Usopp was because we want to see him commit some more resources into killing the Zoro. Uh, make him feel like he has a chance of killing it. Maybe he'll commit one more Dawn. And then we'll actually just get the Zoro back with Uta. So we're actually pretty okay with Zoro being KO'd here. Yeah, he's going to go ahead and put one more up to 8,000 to 5,000 Zoro. Perfect. We got him to use three Dawns. So Zoro will go away. He'll come back much later in the game when we play Uta. And then he's going to go ahead and play Queen. So Queen is a very strong defender for 6,000. So I won't be able to swing for 5,000. But I do have that other Jet Pistol. And he does draw to any discards. The 10 cost Kaido. So either... So I'm thinking he either has another 10 cost Kaido in his hand and it's just clogging up his hand because there's no counter on him. Or maybe he just doesn't really feel like uh, I'm burn rushing the board with a lot of people. And so he probably feels safe enough to not have to use that 10 cost Kaido to clear the board. 
Um, here we go. So on our turn, we're going to go ahead and I'm pretty sure we're just going to go ahead and play the pistol. Yeah, we're going to play pistol, get rid of queen so we can keep applying pressure with Usopp at just 5,000 attack. And then we're going to put one on Zoro, one on Usopp. He does have two Dawn up now. And so we're pretty sure that he's he's going to try his hardest not to play any events. He doesn't want to give us that free trigger with card draw. And it's going to make him do some more uncomfortable decisions here. So yeah, he's going to play uh, a 2,000 counter for the 5,000 attack. So it's not the most ideal. And then he's gonna we're going to go ahead and put two down on Nami and challenge him again for 5,000 power. He will take this one. And then we're going to go ahead and swing 6,000 with our leader. And he does play another 2,000 counter. He's very heavy in 2,000s. So we've been noticing that he's very heavy on 2,000s. And so we're trying to just poke him with as little small attacks as possible so he doesn't get too much value out of uh, those 2,000 counters. Now we're going to go ahead and play Chopper for one and end our turn. So he has a 10 Dawn now. Um, if he did have the other Kaido, I did want to play at least one Chopper just to bait it out. And then we can go ahead and do Uta, Zoro, Chopper. But in this case, he just is a who's who. And so he takes out the one Chopper. And then I think he's just going to swing again at Usopp. He doesn't like seeing that Usopp. So it's going to be another uh, good target for him to take out. Yeah, he's going to swing into Usopp. He really does not like uh, having any triggers uh, with me getting any benefits. So it's good to see that uh, that worked out. So he's going to go ahead and play three. Or yeah, play three for Uta. So Uta is a really good blocker. Uh, it's going to be really annoying to deal around her. But I think we have some answers for her. So let's go ahead and start our turn. We have Max Dawn now. Draw, and we're gonna go ahead and get our uh, one cost starter Nami. So starter Nami is pretty good. In this case, I'm pretty sure I just play starter Nami, even though I know she's probably gonna get rested with the Uta effect. I'm not really too concerned about that. I'd rather have that one be rested over anything else. So we're gonna go ahead and play. Uh, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and swing for five to leader. He's gonna block. He's probably going to keep this Uta alive. He really likes having this Uta out here, giving him lots of value. And now he's going to start using uh, those events that he didn't want to use earlier on. So there we go. He does do the minus two to draw one. And then he's going to... Oh no, this is still our turn. Sorry. And I think we play uh, Uta now. Yeah, we're going to play Uta because we want to play uh, some more pressure on that on the purple Uta. And so we know that he really values that. So we're going to go ahead and swing for six. Let's see if he discards another card to keep her alive. And he does. So he plays another 2000. So he's at two cards left in his hand. And then we're going to go ahead and play the Rush Zoro doing another 6000 to Uta. See how valuable he really thinks of that Uta. 6000 to 5000. And he's going to go ahead and tap two for Thunder Bagua. Thunder Bagua is going to do plus 4000 and let him ramp one, which is fine. So now he only has one card in his hand. He has an Uta, a Who's Who, and that's pretty much it. He has two cards in hand now at the start of his turn. So we're pretty happy right now. Uh, we're up in cards. Uh, he has to swing into the board in order to start clearing things. So it's not too bad. We're, uh, we're still pretty up ahead with him be only being at two life and us being at four. He's coming in a lot of Dons again. And well, he only has two more cards in his hand, so he's probably okay with committing this many 9,000 into Zoro. That's pretty funny. And then he's going to, yeah, swing with Uta right into Nami. And then he has one more card. Uh, he's going to play that event. I don't know the event off the top of my head. I just know that it KOs something and it does minus two Dawn. Uh, I'll put it up right here on the screen so y'all can see what it does. Alrighty, at the start of our turn, we're going to go ahead and draw one card, and we do get the round table. Round table is pretty interesting, and we don't have any big threats to deal with right now, but it might help us out later on. And we notice that he only has one card left in his hand, and he has a bunch of Dawn active. He probably has a Thunder Bagua, so we're going to go ahead and swing 9,000 into uh, Uta to make it impossible for him to defend it. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of that threat already. Four for Brooks, so we can put him down, and one for Chopper. End our turn and see what he does next. Okay, so he's gonna go ahead and start off by putting two Dawn into who's who. He's gonna go ahead and swing into a leader and just see what I have next. So we're just gonna go ahead and happily take that life. And we do like the extra little card draw that we're gonna get now. So he's swinging five into life, five into life with leader. Go go ahead and grab that other one. I was kind of thinking whether or not 
I should block with Uta, but it's probably not really worth it right now. And we get two rushes from our life, so it's going to be really good next turn seeing all that. And he does go ahead and play the Kaido ability, so he's just uh, destroying seven of his Dawn. And we do are forced to discard the Nami from our life, so we only have one life left. And it is kind of a little dangerous territory now, but we do still have the one chopper there. And I think he, yeah, he also played uh, King in order to destroy our Brook. That's all right. Um, it is going to be a little bit tricky now, but he does have only a 3,000 Husu, so we're going to go ahead and boost our leader up to 7,000, I believe. Yeah, because he only has one card. Pretty sure it's a Thunder Bagua, so we're going to make it impossible for him to defend the Husu, give him less attack opportunities. So we're going to go ahead and KO Husu. And, and then I believe, yeah, we're going to play Luffy, Rush Luffy. And we know that he has that Thunder Bogwa. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. So we're going to go ahead and swing for 9,000 into the leader, making it impossible for him to be able to, um, pretty much impossible for him to defend. So he has to take the life. We could have gone Luffy into Zoro. Uh, that could have been a thing. But we, he also, if we did that, he would play Thunder Bagua ramp one and then he would be at i believe six dawn and if he had another king then it probably would have been game over for us so he does try to attack leader into luffy with six thousand with one dawn on him we defended it with character luffy and then he tries to go into luffy again with king for seven thousand so we defend it with our otama that we've had for a long time now finally getting some value out of her and he has four dawn active and if i'm not mistaken i think he actually um okay he he ramps one more up with onigashima and yeah he ends his turn right here so i'm like okay he probably drew into maybe another thunder bagua because he's not playing any other characters and maybe because he can't can't play it yet because it's at four dawn but either way uh we're kind of hesitant on trying to get the game here he probably has a lot of defenders so we go ahead and use that round table to bring king down to negative and we're going to easily ko it uh with our leader then we have Luffy's at 7,000 right now. So 7,000 is a pretty good poking uh, value right here. But I'm not sure. I can't remember if we added more Dawn to Luffy before we played the Zoro. No, we go ahead and swing in for 7,000 because why not? Uh, 7,000. Yeah, there's the Thunder Bagua. So he's going to ramp up for one. He might have one more Thunder Bagua. Um, then we play Zoro. He's going to be at uh, seven, so seven thousand again. Seven to eight thousand doesn't really matter. So uh, he didn't have the other Thunder Bagua, so he is down to zero life. Um, he has to top deck a destruction, or else he pretty much loses the game. I think in this case, I don't know if he was running Douglas Bullet or not. Maybe he was trying to search for Douglas Bullet with Buena Fiesta, but instead he gets a Shiki. Uh, Shiki does give him plus one. And then he has very limited options right now. He's going to try to go for Zoro for 5,000. We're going to go ahead and use the last card in our hand to protect Zoro. So he does have eight Dawn left. So he probably wants to use those eight Dawn to play something pretty big. Or maybe he just has a bunch of units that he hasn't played yet. So he plays four for Uta. And then he's going to play another four for another Uta. So a lot of blockers. Um, no Dawn active. So this is a pretty easy game win here. We're just going to go ahead and start off our turn. Draw one card. And we're just going to put all of our Dawn onto Luffy. He's going to be unblockable. Swinging in for 16,000 and close out the game. That's going to do it for today, folks. Post your comments down below. Let me know what you think about this gameplay video. And if you find yourself coming back to this channel, be sure to hit that like and subscribe. We're going to be bringing more gameplay videos like this and some more One Piece card game news in the near future. So with that being said, I will see you all next time. Bye, everyone.